Mr. Horsfall of Templestowe, Melbourne, is a man with a lot of fowl houses, hens, and a bright idea. He beats short winter days with an artificial dawn. As lights go on, the hens think it's daytime. Righto, girls, get clucking. No room here for light sleepers. Scientists say Mr. Horsfall has the right idea, but the hens union says it's pretty crook on a chook. As night turns into day in the fowl yard, hens get down from their perches. Artificial light stimulates their glands, and the result, more eggs. You can crow about the beautiful morning, but baby, it's dark outside. Talk about well-trained fowls. They even queue up to go onto the production line. Mr. Horsfall would make a fortune in Sydney if he could produce butter like this. And here's the payoff for ingenuity. 3,000 eggs a day. If you can only get a night shift working. What do the roosters think? It's not fair, it's foul. Flags of Australia and the United Nations fly side by side over headquarters of the Australian battalion in Korea. The Aussies, many from Japan, where they served under General Sir Horace Robertson, have a fine record. Now their battalion commander, Lieutenant Colonel Ferguson, gets orders to move back into the front line. The diggers promise a hot reception for the enemy. Though right now the enemy is strictly on the defensive. The communists are not far away though, and the Aussies begin a patrolling force across the Imjin River. They advance warily across an open paddy field. This is no man's land. Under temporary cover until resistance is mopped up, they move forward again. The boys call this hill hopping, advancing from hill to hill in a rugged and unfriendly country. With Russian peace overtures, it may not be long before the diggers and their United Nations allies have won the victory they seek. But just in case the communists do come back for more, wiring parties put up a formidable barrier. It's not just a barbed wire fence either. These boys are setting a trip flare beyond the perimeter using fine wire stretched across a track. The platoon commander watches positions from which machine guns are firing. They won't be firing long though. Diggers call up the Air Force. Good shooting. Another hill in Allied hands. Diggers show their mettle in Korea. Special freight planes bring 57 stud sheep to Sydney for the annual sheep show. They come from hay and they're worth 40,000 pounds. Brother, that ain't hay. Entries in this year's show are the heaviest for years. Judging is done indoors because of heavy rain outside. Sitting up like club members in their favorite chair. And why not? These aristocrats put the gold in the golden fleece. Judging's not easy when every competitor is a potential champion, but these judges are experts. You can't pull wool over their eyes. With sheep worth anything up to 2,000 pounds each, you have to look out for rustlers, even at the showground. In the Merino section, the Grand Ram Championship, the Blue Ribbon of Blue Ribbons, goes to a little known breeder, F.O. Gobert. He's congratulated by Sheep Breeders Association President, Mr. Faulkner. He seems to be pleased about something. Makes a boy feel all sheepish. For the ladies who like their wool made up, there's a mannequin show with a specially trained pedigree ram, Saul of Banuki. The lass wears woolen sportswear, hands tooth pedal pushers, beige shirt, and never crease cuffs and collar. A pastel toned wool ensemble, beautifully cut frock and simple jacket, very elegant. The Parisian effect in an exquisitely styled suit of navy, grey and scarlet. And from Paris to Bonnie, Scotland, with a Royal Stuart tartan skirt, yellow jumper and tartan stole. Another model in wool, this time in grey, a pouch pocket relieves the slim skirt, and if only the sheep could see the parade, then they'd know life's worthwhile. Think it's a mink? It's worth more than that, it's wool. A Royal Beaverine stroller coat, specially shower proof. Another coat style in imported wool tweed, the tent style, worn over a simply cut wool crepe frock. Cocktail time, 
with a slim, elegant ensemble with an off-the-shoulder jumper. And for evenings, a halter-necked gown with a swirling skirt and embroidered wool coat. An enchanting bridal gown, intricately embroidered with white leaves. A dress to make any girl look regal on the most important day in her life. Australia rides the high road to prosperity on the sheep's back. For apart from producing a quarter of the world's wool, she is weaving it into cloth to make fashions right up to the world standard. Wealth and warmth from the Golden Fleece.